All right, so sorry about that. Uh, but again, if we were to look at the renumbering, just to review, if this we renumber from the second mesh to the first mesh, uh, what was three becomes one, what was one becomes two, and what is two becomes three. So if you look at doing this, let's take uh, column three and make it become column one. And likewise, we're going to take row and make it become row one. And if we, oh, I'm sorry, what am I doing? I already screwed up. Sorry. This is my whiteout thing, but it's it's all dried up. Well, okay. I can't. Get this arrow is here. All right. So three goes to one. So what I'm saying is actually, I should I can just reverse the arrows. And, uh, column three goes to column one, and row three goes to row one. All right. And then one goes to two. So we're going to take row one, put it here, and then put column one and put it here. And then finally, 2 goes to 3. So this goes here, and this goes here. Now, if you renumber it in that order, and it looks a little confusing, but let's see if I can get these both on the same page. Let's put that one up here. And I'll put the renumbering. Is that on the page? There you go. And I'll put the new one down here. After the renumbering, right? That would give me the following. Okay, that's all on the page. All right. So this, well, let's go, let's go. This one here goes to the second row, second column. So that's a K1 plus K2. This one here goes to the third column, second row, so that's going to go here. This one goes to the first column, second row. This one goes to third row, second column. This entry here goes to um, third row, I'm sorry, third column, third row. What happened there? Did I do that right? Two goes to three. Did I screw this up? Should this be K2? I need a K2 somewhere else. I screwed something up. One of these has to be K2, and I think it's this one. I think I screwed something up. Yeah, this is a K2. Sorry. You can't see it. This should be a K2, and that was a K1. So that would make this K2. But anyway, this should go to uh, 3, 3. So that puts the K2 there. Well, that's a 0. Now this one goes to second column, first row, so I get the minus K1 here. This one, well that's a zero, but that goes, well it's not worth zero. And finally we get this one. This goes to uh, first row, first column. And zero, zero. And here you can see that this gives you the same result as the original numbering, okay? You get, uh, I'm being sloppy. That gives you the same ordering as this one. So you get the same result. It's just the rows and the columns are switched because of the renumbering, okay? Okay. One more quick example, although I'm not really requiring it for this class, but it's not too bad to see how this stuff kind of goes. Let's consider the following element, which we'll talk about a little later on. This is a truss element, 
and there are two degrees of freedom per node, U1 and a V1, and a, this one has a displacement, U2 and V2, all right? And then there's also uh, forces in each one of those directions. So I can have a force in the y direction at node 1, force in the x direction at node 1, a force in the x direction at node 2, and likewise a force in the y direction at node 2. And so each one of these stiffness matrices is actually a 4 by 4. Maybe I should do this on another. Probably should. And the way we organize those is as follows. Yeah, you know, I'm going to do this on another video. This is kind of a waste of time. I shouldn't have started this. U1, V1, U2, V2. So here's the X and Y degrees of freedom for the first note, X and Y degrees of freedom for the second note. We do the same for the forces. And then, of course, then there's stiffness elements that correspond to this. So if you have a mesh like follows, maybe just a simple two-element mesh, we'll fix these degrees of freedom, and we'll put force down here like this. We can call this node 1, 2, and 3. We'll call this element 1 and element 2. Again, you could construct the local stiffness matrices for each one of those elements. We'll talk about how to do that later. And they would scatter the same way, but with degrees of freedom. So the global stiffness matrix in this case is actually going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 degrees of freedom. And I'm going to break it up not by degrees of freedom, but by node. So this there's actually like one of these there's like a partition because what we have here is u1 v1 u2 v2 u3 v3 right and this goes to fx1 fy1 fx2, fy2, fx3, fy3. So this kind of makes sense. The first element connects to the degrees of freedom of node 1 and 2. So this is like node 1, this is like node 2, this is node 3. Those are the forces. Node 1, node 2, node 3, displacements. And these are the x and y components of each one of those. So the first stiffness matrix would sit right here, okay, and the second stiffness matrix would sit right here, and again you'd get overlap right here at the x and y degrees of freedom of node 2, okay? So if you have multiple degrees of freedom for a node, it actually goes the same way, and that's the way it would go, okay? I'll do another one of these later on too, I think.